Hi, I'm Tim from Tower Systems. I've got uh, Justin with me today. Um, we're the account managers here at Tower Systems. Um, the, the purpose of this is really just to do a bit of a deep dive into our point of sale software, specifically around how some pool shops are using us. Um, we've had uh, you know quite a few inquiries lately and quite a lot of customers come on board in that industry. Um, I guess a, a bit of background, it's not you know an industry we uh, we really sought after. Um, we uh, we do systems for a bunch of different industries, and one of those uh, is bike shops. And we found um, a lot of pool shops were coming to us saying, "Hey, we've seen your your videos with that, and yeah, we're really quite interested." So there's uh, functionality for things like um, you know obviously your point of sale, but there's serial number tracking, quoting and invoicing, um, a heap of stuff. So uh, yeah, the purpose of today is to um to run through some of that. Um, I'll, uh, I'll largely be driving it, but like I said, I've got Justin with me. Um, he'll jump in and contribute a bit as well. Um, this isn't a professional marketing video or anything, so it's not going to be flashy. And uh, look, we're, we're probably going to slip up along the way, but um, look, bear with us and we'll, uh, we'll show you how it all works. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll share my screen with you. There we go. You should be able to see that one there. Yeah, I can. Yep. Yep. So what you have here, this is essentially your main dashboard of the system. Now, this is all totally customizable per machine. So where I've got my kind of full layout here, you might have that on your office or administration PC, but then you might have computers out uh, at the point of sale where you don't want them accessing things like customer statements or account reminders and things like that. So you can actually give them a different layout altogether. I could have that set up so they simply have access to the, the point of sale. They can get into the re repairs and job management in there and they can get into the end of day process. So you can have those, those different layouts to suit different machines and you can really easily switch between those. And as you probably noticed, I've got mine password protected. Um, these can be shortcuts to areas of the system. They can go through multiple levels like my stock one does. Um, and you can customize kind of how that all works to suit. Um, that level of flexibility also translates through to the point of sale screen. So if I jump into point of sale here, you can see I've got mine set up in a fairly simple way. I've just got a few buttons down the right side here. I could have those buttons along the bottom if I preferred. And again, they can be shortcuts to products, to groups of products, to uh, features within the point of sale, to different areas of the system you can, yeah, really kind of chop and change how all of that works. Just going to get rid of that one from the bottom. Um, yeah, so really flexible in the way that works. Um, I've got a few uh, products set up in my system that uh, I was showing a, a bookstore how it had worked for them the other day. So I'll run through that. So if I was putting a transaction through, really straightforward. You'll have a barcode scanner on your machine. Um, so if I was selling uh, this Zodiac uh, Chlorinator, for example, I can simply hit that one. Now I've got that set to bring up an image because it's a relatively expensive item. I want my staff to confirm that is absolutely what they're selling. Um, any one product can have unlimited images against it, um, but that's the one I wanna add that to the sale. I've got quite a long description in there. Um, and again, I had a customer wanting to see how much info they could get on the description for receipts. So we can yeah put quite a bit in there. Um, you'll also see when I add that one to the sale, it's giving me a note down the bottom here saying that I've actually sold out of this item. And as far as my system's concerned, I don't have any left in stock. That's just going to go into a negative. So I can still sell it. Um, so if I had just got a batch of those in and you know they're, they're sitting there ready to go out, but I haven't processed them in, I could still sell those products. And then when I receive that invoice in, it's simply going to balance out my stock levels. So I've got my chlorinator on the sale there. Um, if I wanted to add, you know, maybe some chemicals and whatnot as well, I've got a shortcut here to demo items. And again, I could just scan these products as well, but for the sake of it, I can hit demo items. This customer also wants a few bags of salt. So if I add that first bag there, you can see they're $10, but it's giving me a promotion. If they buy between five and 10, that price is going to drop to $9. So if I add a few more of those, get to four and then get to my fifth one, it automatically changes that price for me. So we can set up all of those catalogs in the background and there's heaps of different mechanisms in the way they can work. So catalogs could be uh, the, the same way that pulp salt work, where it's a quantity break. It could be simply uh, a department or category of product. So I might say all chlorinators are 10% off this week only. They can even be cross transaction. So I had a customer the other day wanting to with uh, pool chemicals, 
they say once a customer has bought more than 10 different products within their filtrite range, they get 20% off the 11th one they purchase. So you can preset all of that sort of stuff in the background. And that, like I said, will work across transactions as well. Um, so I've got a couple of products on the sale there. Look, if this customer maybe questioned the price of my chlorinator there, 675, if I wanted to discount that, I can simply click in the uh, discount column here. Shows me my GP info at the bottom. So if they said, look, I saw it somewhere for 600 bucks, I might go, all right, well, I'll do the same price. I'll set the price to 600 and that discounts it down for me. When I go to finalize that sale, if this customer paid by FBOS, I just hit my FBOS button. I've got my system set to force customer details on every sale. Now you can turn that on and off, you don't have to use it, but I've got mine forcing grabbing customer details. If it's someone that's in, been in before, I can simply select them out of my list. So I've got a demo customer there. If it was a new customer, I can just hit that add button there. And um, one really cool thing with this screen as well, these screens are customizable, both the customer search, the stock screen, and a few others. You've got a little toggle at the top here. So if I didn't want to see maybe these address details over on the right, I can come in here and I can turn those different uh, different fields on and off in there. So you can, yeah, uh, there we go, address one and address two. I can turn them off so they're now not visible. Um, yeah, really flexible. So if I just choose my demo customer there, uh, I'll select that one. If that customer, and they do, that customer has a discount profile. So they actually get a higher percentage off. So the system's gone and changed my price for me on that. I could override it just by clicking on that discount price and removing it if I wanted to, but they're a VIP, so they're entitled to that pricing. Um, and this is also an account sale. Um, so if I wanted to put this one onto a customer's account, maybe it's a local pool maintenance business or something like that, this one's going onto their account. Uh, all I need to do is finalize my sale, put my initials in. And when I do that, it asks me for any delivery address details for that customer. I can also put an order number and any notes in. And as soon as I finalize that, it'll automatically email a copy of that through to the customer. Um, those receipts that it emails, um, here's an example on the screen. These can be totally customized. So. You'll see here, this one, you know, I've got it on an A4 uh, portrait style. They can be landscape, they can be docket style. Um, and this one here, I've got my store details at the top, the customer information. I've got the products that were on that transaction. And you'll see with the chlorinator, I've also got that set to put a picture on there as well. Um, just while you're on there as well, you obviously spoke about the extended description you've got. Um, in the normal description, you've got the warranty info, but if you just want to keep that description obviously really simple, um, you've got the ability to have an extended description that will print out on the, the customer's receipt. So any warranty info that you want to pass on, care instructions, anything that you want to pass on, you can associate that info with uh, specific items. Yeah, absolutely. And so I've got that for that chlorinator there. I've got that printing some extra info, just specifying what's in the box. Um, and, uh, and yeah, the warranty is called out again. Yeah. Um, and also too, while we're here, uh, the serial number as well. So I'm not sure if you'll, you'll talk about it. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I didn't have a serial number on the chlorinator, uh, yeah. but I do have a, uh, a pool pump here. So whenever I sell that particular pool pump, uh, that brings up a prompt and asks me to select the serial number. So the, the really good thing about this, if I had, you know, I've got two in stock, but let's say I had 10 of those, um, those pumps in stock, I could see what date each one is received on. So then if this customer said, yep, I'll grab one of those and you go to get one from out the back, you could check and make sure you get the oldest serial number as opposed to selling them the one that just came into stock. Um, so I can just simply select that one, hit okay. And then when I finalize that sale, so again, I'll just hit, uh, I'll finalize this one, pay by FBOS. I'm gonna add Justin in as, my, as a new customer. So I, main things I wanna grab are mobile number, and email. I've got a couple of tick boxes here. I've got a tick box for allow SMS for this customer. I'll turn that on. And whether I want to send his account via email, I'm not going to give Justin an account. <laughs> I, I can grab any birth date details. So if I want to do any marketing around birthdays, I can. I could even give Justin a barcode. So 
um, we've got a company we work with that will produce like a, a you know VIP card with your store info on the front and a barcode on the back. I could scan that and say, here you go, Justin, here's your VIP card. And that will then, whenever he comes in, if I scan that, it'll apply any discounts he might be entitled to. It can record loyalty and also just track transactions. So if that pump dies in nine months, I don't need to see his receipt. I can look it up in the system and I've got all of that transaction information there. Um, I can also flag, uh, so in here I can set what type of discount Justin might get, whether he gets a particular type of discount voucher. So uh, discount vouchers, I'll, I'll come back to that one in a second, continue through this. Uh, if Justin was a greenie and said, uh, yep, look, don't print any, uh, any receipts for me, I can disable that. Or if he's getting sick of all the text messages I'm sending him, I can disable SMS for him as well. I can apply any tags. So I might put a tag in here of uh, salt water pool. Uh, I might put a tag in of uh, eight by four and a tag of fiberglass. So I can put those tags against the customer. So then if I wanna do any marketing to him down the track, I could go in and say, all right, show me anyone that I've tagged with salt water. And then I could send them all a text or an email to say, hey, we've just got uh, a huge uh, surplus of salt in, 10% off this week only. So I'll add Justin in. When I finalise this one, he's paying by card. So all I do is hit my FPOS button. That would then put that figure onto the screen of my FPOS pin pad. So we bridged the two together. So there's no room for human error. I couldn't key in $4.95. Um, it's one receipt for the customer. And it's just a, a really seamless process. And there you go, you can see a copy of that receipt and it's got the serial number listed there for me. Um, what I was talking about before with the uh, discount vouchers as well, um, I haven't got it on this one, but I'll sh look, I've got another example of a receipt here. Uh, let me just bring one up for you, uh, sorry. So this one here, this is from a pet store we did a while back, but. This is a docket style receipt. So a couple of things we do with those, we put your logo on the top so they're nice and professional store details. Um, being a pet store, this customer bought a bag of dog food. Now you can set the receipts to do images and promotions in the body of the receipt based on what the customer purchased. So in this case, again, a pet store, customer purchased a bag of dog food and it was over a hundred dollars. So this sale meets criteria to put a little slip on the bottom here, promoting that there's a dog wash out the back that the customer can use for free. So, you know, if in the, the case of a, a pool supplies business, you might set that that any time you sell uh, filter media, you know, sand or glass or, or what it may be, you could set it that it does a little slip saying, hey, don't forget, we offer on-site servicing of pool filters. Um, so that way, you, you know, you're promoting that other side of your business. Um, but what I really wanted to show with the receipts is this bit on the bottom. You can set the system to look at how much the customer spent. Um, and you can set this to be different percentages on different departments. So it might be 5% on filters, you know, 3% on chlorinators, 10% on chemicals. It'll just work out the, the voucher value and put that on the bottom of the receipt. So if even if it was just a customer off the street, they didn't give you their name, they didn't want to record it against their details, it'll still print that voucher to give that customer a reason to continue coming back in to buy their pool supplies from you. Um, and that said, you can then turn that around and I could say, hey, Justin, you know what? Give me your details though. I'll store that voucher for you. And then the next time he comes in, it'll stop and say, Justin's got $6 uh, as a voucher. Does he want to use that off the sale he's putting through today? Um, anything uh, you want to add on? What I've been through so far, Justin? Oh, just on those discount vouchers, um, you can use them in a bunch of different ways. Like I've got a pool supply business that um, obviously you spoke about the servicing side of the business. So, uh, you know, people go in, accrue these vouchers on anything they spend in store, but on the receipt, it actually has the service aspect of the business as the place where they redeem those vouchers. So it's essentially pushing everyone to the servicing side of things. So not only are they getting the purchase within the retail side of the business, but they're also getting, you know, the service business as well. So you can be smart about the vouchers. You can do it on absolutely everything in store. You can exclude or include, you know, specific departments and categories as well. So yeah, really good tool to, you know, boost that business. 
Yeah, yeah, excellent. Totally agree. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about while I was in the point of sale um, is, uh, is special customer orders. So, you know, uh, full supply businesses, that, you know, some uh, components are quite expensive, be it parts and also, you know, new, new, new products. Um, so special orders is, uh, is, is quite important. So I can do a lookup from anywhere in the system. I don't have to actually be in the point of sale, but let's say Justin came in and he said, I'm after one of the Zodiac chlorinators. I'm gonna do a lookup on it. Uh, I'm just gonna type in the keyword chlorinator uh, and that'll find anything in my database with that word in it, regardless of if it's at the start, middle or end of the description. So there it is there, that's the one, the uh, 675, I can do a lookup on that um, and that'll grab its full history. It'll show me every time I've received it. I can see whether the cost and retail fluctuate at all. It's currently 675. I've got minus two of these in stock uh, and they come from supplier X. Now, if Justin turned around and said, yep, yeah, look, I, I, I want one of those ones. I can hit extra details as a start um, and I'll just resize my screen here slightly. I can also see the image over there and I can see the extra text. If Justin wanted one of these, I can just hit order this item down the bottom. It's gonna put it onto my next reorder report for supplier X, he wants one. Uh, and then in customer number, I could come in here and I could find Justin, uh, spell his name right helps. Uh, I'll get there. So there he is, Justin. Hit okay. Yep, I wanna add that to the next reorder report for supplier X. Do I want to charge him a deposit? Oh, look, absolutely. <laughs> but no, look, I'll be, I'll be good to you today. I'll, I'll sell that one if you don't cut that. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to charge him a deposit. So what that's done, that's automatically placed that onto my next reorder report in the background for Supplier X. Um, it's going to highlight for me that, I, that that's for Justin. It, it will then prepare a reorder report that I can send through to Supplier X. When that filter, when that chlorinator, sorry, comes in, it's going to stop and remind me that that's for Justin. Um, it will then print a pricing label with his details on it, so I know to put it aside for him. And in the background, because I had that tick box checked earlier about SMSing him, it'll automatically send Justin a text message to say, "Hey, Justin, your chlorinator's come in. Come and pick it up when you're ready." Um, so that process is is all automated for you. Um, anything you want to add to that, Justin? Um, oh, I've done it. Obviously, we've got a special customer order management screen as well. So you obviously you don't have to show it, but you can go in and, you know, if it's someone's job within the business to manage all these orders, especially if you're a business that, that does handle a lot of them, um, we've got a really good management facility to easily, you know, obviously manage those special orders. Yeah, correct. Yep. So you can just jump into special customer order management. I've got my password protected. But you can come in here um, and you can view those, uh, reassign them. You've got yeah, got a lot of a lot of functionality within there. Um, and that look, I guess that level of, of flexibility, you know, with special orders also translates to lay buyers. So lay buyers is really thorough in the system. So I could go demo items. I'm going to put uh, pump. Uh, do that. Yeah. I'm going to go with a chlorinator. And I'll put a couple of products on here for Justin as well. So I've got all of that. Uh, 1300, if Justin wanted to lay by this, all I do is hit my lay by button down the bottom here. Uh, have I got one there? I don't reckon I... No, I was showing someone they didn't want to offer lay by, so we got rid of it. But I can, this is how easy it is to re restructure your point of sale screen here. I can just hit my edit option. I want this to be a shortcut. I want it to be a shortcut to lay-by sale. And there we go, I've just redesigned my screen. So and you now, didn't have to get out of the point of sale screen to obviously achieve all that? Yeah, no, no, and if I've got four point of sale, once I've done that on one of them, it's automatically updated the other ones if they're all using the same layout. They can have different, but they can also, yeah, certainly all operate off the, the same configuration. So I can just hit lay-by sale now, choose Justin out of my list, it's telling me he's only got to buy five more uh, chemicals before he reaches that uh, promotion where he gets 10% off the next one. Uh, and now I just finalise this sale, put my initials in, and I can choose how much deposit Justin's paying. Now that can be preset, so it might be 10% or it might be $100. You can configure it. 
I'm going to say Justin's paying, I don't want to do an HP update. I'm going to say Justin's paying $200. I can choose when he wants to have this fully paid and picked up by. So, you know, maybe he's building a new pool or having a new pool put in and it's not going in until June. I might say, all right, well, he's going to pick this stuff up on the 23rd. He's paying his uh, deposit by cash. Yep, that's all good. When I finalise that, that'll automatically print two receipts, one for Justin and one for the goods um, to, to you know, kind of sit out the back with it. Uh, and they can also be totally customised as well. They can have your terms and conditions on the bottom. They can have a signature section. Um, they can't even have a payment plan on there if you choose as well. Um, I, do, I, don't, I haven't got mine set up for it, but that can also be configured to bring up your lay-by management screen Anytime you do a lay-by, a payment, or anytime I touch that lay-by, it'll bring up a separate manage. Oh, I have got it turned on. Um, it'll bring up this separate uh, management screen. So if Justin said, oh, I've paid 200 bucks, like, can I, can I just take the chemicals with me? I could then flag that as being collected. And that would then, when I finalise that, it'll issue another receipt that'll show when those goods were collected on it. Anytime Justin makes a payment, It'll show what products are still on it, what's being collected and what hasn't. And even still, if he came in and said, oh, I've got the Zodiac chlorinator on, on order there, can I change that to the Pentair? I could simply click on that. Uh, I'm just going to cancel that one. I could just, and I could del click on that one and delete that. And then I could go and add the Pentair version to it if he was wanting to swap that over. So, yeah, really flexible with the way Laywise works. Um, the next bit I wanted to go through when it comes to point of sale is um, uh, quoting and invoicing. So uh, if Justin said, look, I'm thinking of getting a pool put in, I'm just trying to weigh up what all my costs are going to be, I might go, well, you're going to need a uh, chlorinator. You're going to need a pump. Uh, I'm not going to put a serial number against that because this one's just a quote. Uh, I'm going to, and you know, I might go through and put a whole heap of other products on there as well. I'm just going to randomly select a few. And then if Justin said, yeah, yeah, look, actually that, that looks pretty good. Can, can I get that as a quote? I can hit my select customer. It's Justin. And I'm going to suspend this and move it to a quote. I'm going to uh, send it to my quote and invoice management. And that will then hold it in this other part of the system where I can track those um, I could email Justin a copy of that so I could come in here and I could go, all right, well, let's do this. So let's go print that and I'm going to print a copy and I'm going to email a copy of it through to you as well. If Justin turned around and said, yeah, I want to go ahead, I can then invoice that and I could do a picking slip for it as well. Um, while I'm back in this screen as well, I've got a heap of different options. So I can come in here and I can apply a discount to the overall quote. Uh, I could go through and discount each product separately if I wanted to. Uh, I might even look at this and go, all right, well, uh, I'm just going to put a note on this and just put a note here. Justin isn't uh, fussy about what chlorinator. So that way, if he does go ahead and I need to substitute that, I know he's going to be okay with it. I could do it. So that's a note against the chlorinator itself. I can also go notes across the top here and put more generic notes against the quota invoice itself. So I might put a note in here of uh, Paul being built by whoever the pool supplier is, uh, you know, put notes on when it's going to be done and all of that sort of stuff. And yeah, you can track all of that in there. Um, and while I'm in here, you can also uh, duplicate quotes. So if Justin came in and said, hey, look, I, you guys built me a quote at my last house, really happy with everything I had there. I'm building a new one for the next one. You got balls everywhere. Uh, I could come in here and I could find his previous quote. Uh, let's But that might be then an invoice. Uh, I can then copy that and simply duplicate those same products that were on it and then modify any little bits I need to. So, you know, if there's a a, a kind of typical pool configuration that you do and you want to have all the, you know, the plumbing filters, chlorinators and all of that sort of stuff built into it, you could simply go copy this and give Justin that same quote. Uh, what do you reckon, Justin? Anything you want to add so far? Uh, no, no. Yep, I'll keep powering on. Um, yeah. So the next bit is uh, either from the point of sale or I can go back to my main screen here. 
Um, we've got uh, repairs and job management. So I've got a shortcut to it there. And I've also back in my point of sale, I've got a shortcut to it down the bottom here. So I can jump into my repairs and job management uh, and I could come in here and I could add in a new repair. So I could go add repair. I'm gonna add one in again, I'll use Justin as my example. It's finding him as the default there because he's the last customer I used. Um, I can choose who's booking this one in. So it's me, date entered, and I could say when my expected date and time is for this job. I can put in a quote value. So if I said to Justin, it's gonna be about 200 bucks to fix your pump, I could put that in and I might, I could put some quick repair instructions in here. So I could put in uh, repair Pentair 750 LTP. And I could come through and I could select what product it's assigned to. So if it's a product Justin had purchased from me before, I could select it from his previous transactions or from my stock list. Or if it's something he's bringing in that I haven't had in stock before, I can simply choose down the bottom here, it's a pull pump. And then I can put the specs in here. So I can say it's a Pentair, it's a LTP 750, uh, put in a serial number, there's an insurance claim number, I can put that. Where I'm storing it out the, bay, out the back, it's gonna be in bay 17. I can just on that, depending on what you select, you can customize that list of additional info as well. So um, obviously if it's another item, you don't need to know, you know, claim number or serial number or whatever it might be. You can obviously choose to, um, you know, show and hide specific info. Yeah, yeah, really good point. So, you know, if you had chlorinators on there, for example, you might, you know, have even a yes, no option as to whether it includes, whether they're dropping it off with the uh, with the cell as well, or if it's just the main unit itself. Yeah. Um, and you can also put any description against it. So if uh, it had severe rust, I could put a note down the bottom there. So that is going to print off on the customer's documentation and it's also going to track it in the system for you. Yeah. Um, if I go to my next screen, it's asking me what job I'm doing against this. Uh, I've got data on here largely from a bike shop, but you can preset all of these different types of jobs. So if I said this is a uh, silver service, that will actually pre-populate what is to be done as part of that silver service. I've got a cost of $95 associated with that. In the background, that can also have any parts automatically assigned to it. Um, and yeah, I've just logged the job in. Um, from there, down the bottom here, I could print my job cards. Uh, sorry, I've just got my window hiding it a bit. I could then, I'll just save that one. I could print my job cards and that will give me the option to print up to three different versions. So that could be uh, a repairer one, which might be on A4 that you know goes with the goods and goes out the back on the shelf. I've got a customer version. That could be A4, or I could have that version set to print off on a docket. And then I might have a third version that goes up on a job board, for example. Um, and then I can email that through to the customer as well. As I perform jobs, so as I go through this, I can click on it and I can see what I'm doing. I can allocate any parts to it at this point as well. I've also got an option for images. So if I opened that pump up and you know the impeller was destroyed, I might take a photo of it and load that against it. So I've got it for historical reasons and you can load all of that in against it. When I finish this job, all I do is put a completed date in and that would automatically email or text the customer to say, hey, your pump's been repaired, come and pick it up when you're ready. Um, you've, you've got options at the top to search through those. So I can filter that based on what outstanding repairs I have, what dates they're expected to be collected. Um, whether they've been sent to external suppliers and things like that, you can get yeah, come in here and, and manage your jobs. Excellent. So that's, uh, look, a, a fit, very deep dive into the point of sale side of things. Um, now, I'll just quickly touch on the stock side of things when it comes to the product. So I'm just going to add my uh, chlorinator back to my sale. I can jump into my product screen for this item just by clicking a shortcut down the side here for stock screen, or I've got a keyboard shortcut to get in there as well. So I can see my description in there. And as you can see, you can have a really long description against it. I've got this one in pool supplies. Uh, I've got a sell price of 675. I've got a separate website price. Now I've got mine set as being the same and I've got a separate trade price. 
So different customers can, you know, you might say, hey, Justin gets the trade price and I might set that to be $600 instead of 675. So I can change that over. Um, or I could even say Justin gets 5% off trade or 5% off retail. Or I could even say, you know what, family friend, I'm gonna give Justin cost plus 10%. Um, so you can pick and choose what you do with pricing. Um, while I'm in here, I've also got images. And as I said, you can load unlimited images against any one product. I've got my extra details. The top box prints off on receipts. The bottom bit will flow through to your website um, to display as the extra info there. I can link PDFs to it as well. So if I have further information sheets, I can link those against the item in there too. Um, back on my main screen here, if I wanted to sell this chlorinator on my website, all I need to do is tick that web store item box and it will then send across all of its description, pricing and whatnot, images, that'll all flow across and it'll list it on my website for me. I've got minus three of this in stock. So when that hits my website, it's going to specify that it's out of stock. Um, as long as you want it to you know, link the stock levels as well. Um, if someone buys it online, that sale will just flow back in. Um, from an e-commerce point of view, we integrate with Shopify, Magento or WooCommerce. Um, against this chlorinator, I've also got serial numbers. I'm not tracking serial numbers against that chlorinator, but if I wanted to, I've got a few different options. I can track it when, just when it's sold. So whenever I sell one of those chlorinators, it would say now enter the serial number, or I can do it from arrival to sale. So if I tick that bottom box, whenever I receive those chlorinators in, if I got five in, it would ask me to enter the five serial numbers. And then when I go to sell it, it'll tell me those serial numbers and ask me which one I'm selling, like my pump was. Um, you've got options for reordering here as well. So you can set min max level. So I wanna have six, reorder it when it gets to two and warn the staff at the point of sale when I get down to two. Um, but that leads me to the next bit. A lot of customers when it comes to reordering are doing that by sales history now, as opposed to min max levels. Um, Just before you get out of that screen, um, the variants as well. So if you've got different variants of products, so products that might come in different colors or sizes, um, obviously you've got the facility there to group that stock. Um, handy for things like your purchase ordering and things like that. But obviously if you do have the web integration, um, those items do flow across as a group. So as an online customer, if you select one item and just want to see exactly what different sizes and colours that item comes in, it's all listed on that one page rather than, you know, individual pages online. Yeah, yeah, really good point. So if you're sending, you know, uh, a particular chemical across to your website and it comes in 500 mil, one litre and five litre, rather than pushing it across to display as three different products that it show as one and then the customer can just select what uh you know what uh amount they want yeah um but yeah sorry you're talking about purchase order oh uh, yeah yeah so i was going to jump to reorder by sale so um if i jump back to my main screen here um i've got my various options so i've got reorder by sales so i could come in here and i could say all right well i want to i want to do a reorder i want to do it for filtrite and I can choose what sales period I want to, I want to base this reorder on. So um, some customers will do this uh, as a routine. So you might jump in and say, yep, reorder based on my sales since I last saw the rep. So maybe, you know, two weeks or a month. Um, the alternative is you, you might use it uh, seasonally. So I might jump into the system in, uh, you know, August and go, you know, what's going to start getting warmer in the next couple of months? I want to do a reorder for my uh, pool chemicals based on what I sold between October and December last year. So I could choose that date range and I could use that as a foundation for, for preparing my reorder report. Um, you've got a heap of options down the bottom here. Uh, the most important one uh, that our customers really love is show monthly breakdown. So what that one lets you do, if that's selected, when you choose this sales range, it'll actually show you January, February, March, April, and so on, and how many of this product you sold in each month. Um, I'll leave that unselected. I just want to keep it a bit simple on the next screen to start with. So if I do that based on my field trial products, um, I can customize what fields I'm looking at here. So whether I want to look at uh, my supplier stock code, I don't care about the supplier because I'm only doing field trial, so I can turn that off. 
but I might want to look at uh, whether there's any on any pending orders at the moment. And I can see I have, I'll turn that one off. So you can customize what, what, few, what columns are visible there. So I can see exactly how many of each chemical I sold over that time frame. Sold 12, I've got zero. So I might want to get another 12 of those. Sold 17, I've got minus two. Yeah, I'm going to need some of those too. So you can go through and add your quantity to order. I could either do that manually or I could simply just go use quantity, use my quantity sold, and that will populate your quantity sold into your quantity to order really quickly. Um, if I then create an order for that, that'll then merge that with any uh, special orders for customers for any of this stock. It will then give me the option to still modify it, to add any other products or remove things. Um, and I can then submit it to my supplier. So reordering by sales is yeah really popular. And we've got a, uh, a more thorough video on that one as well. So if some, you want to look through that, just sing out and we'll show you the video. Um, look, I'm just looking through my list. Uh, that's largely what I had to run through. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, the other thing was uh, just manufactured goods. I missed manufactured goods in the stock screen. So uh, any one product, uh, if this was something that I maybe made up as a kit, so you know, maybe it was a, a plumbing kit or a new pool owner pack or something like that, maybe that had the hose, um, you know, some base chemicals, a net, a scoop, uh, a brush and things like that in it. I could flag that it's a manufactured good and I could tell the system what is within that product that makes up that manufactured good. So then when I go to sell it, I sell it as one product, but the system knows exactly what it's made up of. Um, so look, that's ultimately what I uh, wanted to run through today. Is, um, is there anything else you want to add to that, Justin? Looking through my list now, um, just a couple of quick little ones, I guess. So selling items at a fractional quantity. So depending on whether it's length or weight or, you know, whatever it might be, we've got facilities to obviously handle that. Um, I will add it doesn't have to be, you know, half or quarter fractional quantities. It can be any sort of fractional quantity and the system will absolutely work that out at, at whatever price you set. Um, secondhand good management as well. Um, so we've got a facility that handles that. Um, you know what, actually, now that I think about it, there's a thousand things we haven't touched on today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you're right, secondhand goods, there's events. So I can go in and say, show me someone that hasn't bought salt in the last 12 months from me. Yeah. Um, and I could send them an email or text, or I could, you know, market to customers based on, you know, when their last visit was or what they have purchased in the past. So I could go in and say, show me everyone that bought a filter in the last six months. And I could send them a text or an email to say, hey, how's that going for you? Is there anything we can help with? Yeah. Um, we also integrate with Zero, So all of your uh, sales and supplier invoices will flow across into Zero for you. Um, reporting is really in depth and sing out and we can shoot through some example reports. Um, yeah, uh, what else? What else are we forgetting, Justin? Oh, yeah, look, as you said, a couple of things. But um, you know, if there's any unanswered questions, uh, Tim or I would be happy to organise a one-on-one -on -one demonstration and go through more specific things, you know, suited to your business if, if there's anything unanswered after watching the video. So Yeah, 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 totally agree. Like, just sing out and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll either send through some more information or we can tee up time for a one-on-one uh, -on -one Zoom meeting. Yeah. All right, well, uh, look, let's leave it there. Um, yeah, by all means, if anyone's got any questions, either call us on the 1300 number, shoot through an email to sales at towersystems.com.au, or you're more than welcome to call our mobiles as well. Uh, I'm on uh, 0401 833 917. And Justin, yours is? Uh, 0434 365 789. I thought you were going <laughs> to say your number as well. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were going to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all good. All right. Well, um, yeah, sing out if we can help in any way. And uh, thanks for watching if you got this far. Thank you.